So you have two high-end Android phones that come out on T-Mobile. What do we do in phone dog land? We dog fight them. That's what we do. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. We dog fight them. Pit them together, at least, in a dog fight to see which one comes out on top. On one hand, you have the Samsung Galaxy S2. Now, this is T-Mobile's variant, and it's a little bit different from the other ones. It has a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S3 CPU, so not that Exynos processor that we're familiar with on the other Samsung devices, but it still has a 4.5 2-inch Super AMOLED Plus display, 8-megapixel camera, and a ton of goodies to make it an awesome Android handset. It's available for $229, but you also have the HTC Amaze 4G, which is available now. A little bit more expensive by about $30, but has an awesome build quality with some metal accents on the sides and on the back, and has that same processor with a 4.3 inch display and an 8 megapixel camera. Which one of these is the one to have? Which one of these do you want to walk home with? We'll find out that more in the dogfight, but first, Special thanks to my boys at Best Buy. I gotta give them some love because they hook us up with phones like this and like this, like I do that, for use in our one ball bandit game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices or heck, any device, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, and so much more. So when you walk out, you're good to go. You don't have to waste your time doing email, setting up anything. At Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working. But enough of that, let's check it out. Is it the T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy S2 or is the hot one, the HTC Amaze 4G? Let's find out, starting right now. T-Mobile users, you really have some exciting devices to choose from. If you're going to get a new phone right now, be it you know, you're coming from another carrier or you're upgrading and your two years is almost up, you've got some exciting Android phones to choose from. Two of those are right here in front of the camera. One is the T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy S2. Now this device came to the US a couple of months ago and it's available in three different flavors on Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon with some different name variations and things like that. Now the design is a little bit different on this one as well. It's the last Galaxy S2 to come to the US, or at least to be released in the US. And you can see, you know, if you've seen the reviews of the Epic 4G Touch and at and Samsung Galaxy S2, you can see that the uh, design is a little bit different. The battery door here is a little bit different with the hump kind of encompassed on the battery door as opposed to being a separate piece. You can see the display is much like the Epic 4G Touch with a 4.5 2-inch Super AMOLED Plus display. And then over here, you got your 8 megapixel camera. It has a dual core 1.5 gigahertz, and this is where it uh, differentiates. 1.5 gigahertz uh, dual core Snapdragon S3 processor, so it's a little bit different. The long story behind that, or the short story rather, is uh, that they had to switch out the processor to make it compatible with T-Mobile's AWS 1700 megahertz band. So you wanted that T-Mobile 4G, well they had to switch out the processor from Samsung's Exynos CPU. It also has the biggest battery of any of the Galaxy S2 devices with a 1850 milliamp hour battery. Now you have the HTC Amaze over here. It also has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon uh, S3 CPU. It has a 4.3 inch QHD display it has an 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording and then it has a front facing camera as does the, uh, the Galaxy S2. Now both of these are available at T-Mobile now and they're both running Android 2.3 with their respective user interfaces installed. Now, TouchWiz 4.0 over here with the Samsung device, Sense 3.0 over here with the HTC device and they're available at T-Mobile. This one is $229.99, this one is $259.99. So they kind of break out of that magical $199.99 price tier that a lot of the carriers have gone with for a couple of uh, months, or actually a couple of years now, with their high-end devices. So a little bit more expensive, and you know, it's interesting, you know, you look at this one, it's $30 more expensive, and you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Now, the design's a little bit different. We'll take a look at those first. You can see this one's kind of made of plastic, you know, complete plastic. It has some chrome on the sides of the power button over here, micro USB charging port on the bottom. You are a volume rocker over the left side, and then you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a, you know, it feels good in the hand, and it's relatively thin. It's a very thin device in comparison to the Amaze, which is a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker, but it misses out on those premium build materials versus the Amaze 4G. Now you look at this over here, micro USB charging port and HDMI port over on the left. You can see the volume rocker over there. Two shortcut buttons down here, one for your video camera, one for your still camera, and then 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top with uh, your power button. But the difference here, the metal accents. You can really see the difference here in this device versus this. And yeah, I, I can't obviously show you this on camera, but just when you hold them in your hand, there's a premium feel that comes from the Amaze 4G that doesn't come with the, uh, the Galaxy S2. So that's a nice touch. It's nice on the, uh, the Amaze 4G. And if you're looking for something that kind of has the build quality of the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, and some of the other iOS devices, but you're looking for it on Android, this is the best built Android device that I've seen, well, ever, but 
you know, well, no, I should say, ever, I, this is the best one I've ever seen. You can see 4.3 inch display. You can see how it's slightly raised from the back, giving it a premium look. You can see the metal looks really nice in the back, and then the soft touch plastic back here. It has no creaks, no wiggles, just feels good in the hand, and it's a pretty hefty 6.1 ounces, but it's not something I noticed when I was carrying it around in the pocket. So it depends on which one you prefer. The benefit to this one, you drop it, and somebody asked for a drop test on Twitter. There's your drop, uh, your drop test. This one, plastic, not going to hit the ground, or when it hits the ground, it's not going to shatter, or uh, most likely isn't, you know, going to lower risk of shattering. You look at the Amaze 4G, the metal's going to dent. If you drop it, the display is popping out a little bit, so, you know, you may risk just breaking the display a little bit more. So, little things to keep in mind. You want the higher quality device in terms of build. This one is uh, better in terms of drops and things like that. So, if you're clumsy, I'd go with the Galaxy S2. If you want the better design, I'd consider the, uh, the HTC Amaze 4G. But both are running Android 2.3 and uh, with their respective user interfaces. And you can see on the Galaxy S2, you get 411 and more. You get T-Mobile's All Share. You get Asphalt 6, below bonus apps, and then the typical Google stuff. You get Keys Air, Kai's Air, Lookout, which is a mobile security program, Samsung's Media Hub with a nice new logo, T-Mobile's More For Me, T-Mobile's My Account, My Device, Netflix, and then you get Polaris Office Pro Apps, Social Hub, which is another Samsung program, T-Mobile Mall, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV, so a lot of T-Mobile pre-installed applications, quick video chat, visual voicemail, and then Zinio Reader. Over here, a little bit of a different menu structure. You can see how this scrolls from side to side, very similar to iOS, although you'll notice that if you know you remember my, my review of the Infuse 4G or the... Uh, the uh, drawing a blank here, it's clearly Friday. Uh, the Infuse 4G or the Droid Bionic, or excuse me, the, uh, the Droid Charge, you can see that the, uh, the touch was a little bit different here. Now let's look at the HTC Amaze 4G, and you can see what comes pre-installed uh, on it as well. Let's scroll up here. 411 and more also installed. Typical Google stuff. T-Mobile's highlight program. You do get HTC Hub and HTC Likes, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. It gives you some additional personalization options from HTCSense.com. Then you have T-Mobile's More For Me, T-Mobile's My Account, My Device, and you get Polaris Office Pro Apps, T-Mobile Mall, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV, Video Chat, Visual Voicemail, and then Wi-Fi Hotspot, which I believe I may have neglected over here. You should get it on this one uh, also, but I believe it's uh, stored down in the settings, if I remember right. But you get it on that one as well. And then Zinio Reader over here. Now, you're going to notice these scroll up and down, so in the typical Android format. And then you can go over here and kind of sectionalize things by frequently used apps or by downloaded applications as well. Now, take a look at the notification bars because there's some differences here as well. And you can see up here you get your shortcuts on Samsung's TouchWiz 4.0, shortcuts to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, silent mode, and then auto rotation. And you can see the network ID and then notifications down there at the bottom. On the HTC side, you get some additional stuff. You get your recently used applications up here in this little carousel. You get your notifications. Then you get this little tab down here, which you can switch between to go to quick settings. You can turn on and off Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspot, mobile network, Bluetooth, GPS, all settings. And then you can access HTC's built-in file manager. Now, this has one gigabyte of memory, and you can see here what's running. I can simply hit kill all. I can hit refresh. I can restore that, or uh, hit refresh, and then go back, and it's all cleared out. So it's nice to have that, and Samsung's has it as well. You can see here, we'll go into it and take a look through the, uh, the task manager. It's nice to have that because it prevents your, saves you from having to download advanced task killer or any of these third-party task killers through the Android market because there is quite a bit of debate going on around that. So, uh, something to keep in mind. But anyway, you know, different UIs over here appeal to different people and you can see Sense has been around for some time and you know, even though it is Sense 3.0, there are some minor changes like you'll notice that it goes around in a carousel type format. But if you're used to anything from the Droid Eris to the Droid, um, the Droid, uh, the original, or the Droid 2 rather, I'm drawing a blank here, wait a second. HTC uh, Sense 3.0, and so on. Man, it's clearly Friday. I need some more coffee. You can see that, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the Thunderbolt, or there we go, Thunderbolt, or any of these other recent HTC devices that are maybe running an older build of HTC Sense, you can uh, see that the changes are few and far between. But you do get some neat things like the carousel rotation. You can see when I turn it back on, I get these cool little uh, home screen shortcuts, like the ability to friend stream to see the weather, and I'll show you those in the personalization menu. You can go in here and change the skin. So you see how this is blue up here. I can change the skin and make it black or red or, you know, using any of the built-in skins here. I can make it HTC Burgundy or Blue Sky, which is what it's on right now. Now, I can also change the wallpaper, of course, but I really like this lock screen feature because you can change it and make it stocks. You can make it clock. You can make it the weather. And you can change the little custom uh, applications that are down there at the bottom. So let's say, you know, phone, Gmail, those are all applications I use. So we'll apply the weather, and then we'll go back out and turn it off and back on, you can see it brings up Charlotte's weather along with these uh, these little 
applications, frequently used applications. So I can drag Gmail down, for example, and either access it directly or I can pull the ring up to unlock the device. So some new customizations there. Those really came into play in Sense 2.0, but in 3.0, you get that ability to, uh, to change the weather uh, or change the, uh, the lock screen, which is really nice. Then you have this over here, TouchWiz 4.0. It's the best iteration of TouchWiz I've ever seen, and it finally competes with the big boys, Motorola's UI, HTC's UI. And you can see here, just you know, incredibly fast in comparison to the old TouchWiz that we remember from the Droid Charge, from the Infuse 4G, uh, and some of these other older Samsung devices. You'll notice that the color behind the apps is gone. You'll notice that the dock is a little bit less noticeable. There's no you know, big kind of silver stuff behind it. it. It goes in with the wallpaper, which is a nice touch. And you can see uh, everything's very quick. It loads very fast and works well with Android 2.3. So no lag time, uh, or little to no lag time. And you can just see, you know, it looks so much better. Now let's go into the widgets on this, because this is pretty cool. They changed the widgets around. We'll go in here and take, uh, actually, we'll, we'll do it directly by going here. And you can see, instead of bringing up that kind of tacky, this one doesn't bring it up because it brings up the personalization menu, but instead of bringing up that tacky Android, you know, a big box in the middle that says, what do you want to do? Do you want to go widgets, favorites, or folders, shortcuts, or wallpapers? It brings it up down here in the corner and gives you the ability to pan between the seven home screens on your own, which is a really nice touch. So we'll go over here, for example, and take a look at widgets, and you can see they all come up here in the bottom, very uh, unobtrusive, very subtle, and you can see when I scroll between them, it kind of gives you this kind of bookshelf appeal or CD appeal where it kind of scrolls them back and forth, and you can see that you get some nice widgets with it this time around. That was something I always criticized Samsung for, was you know, you have three or four widgets and that's it. It's much nicer over here with AccuWeather, AP Mobile, Application Monitor, uh, Buddies Now, Agenda Month, Classic Clocks, a lot of different options for your screen. You can see I already have some of these on there with the clock, the weather, and then I have you know, AP Mobile, and then I have the bigger one. Now, one thing that's cool about TouchWiz 4.0, you do get the ability this time around to customize the way that they look. And so let's see, for example, I mean, if you watch any of my reviews, you know how much I love the ability to customize widgets because let's be honest, you, know, you may have some uh, a screen like this where you want to put a widget or two in here, but with HTC's widgets, you know, while they're very, very beautiful, I'll go in here and show you some of HTC's widgets, for example. While they're beautiful widgets, they're well organized and they look good, you can see that you know you can't customize the size of that or you can't customize the size of the agenda one, it just takes up the whole screen. Whereas with this, I could bring in maybe the, uh, the agenda one and shrink it down where it would fit right there in that space. So HTC's widgets to me are more beautiful, but on the downside, HTC's widgets don't allow for customization in terms of size like they do. Uh, on TouchWiz 4.0. So big pros there, you know, in terms of user interface and user interface alone, it's going to appeal, or it's going to de vary depending on what appeals to you the most. For me, I would prefer uh, TouchWiz 4.0 just ever so slightly in terms of the aesthetics department over since 3.0.